it's going to be thank you there. Uh, we have a beautiful sanctuary. It's a great place to come and you know talk, share, and come come some Sunday. We'd love to have you anytime. Yeah. Anyway, uh, before we get started, a couple little housekeeping. Uh, bathrooms are straight out in the hallway. Generic women's. <laughs> I think we did it that way. We remodeled that one, so we're working on that one. <laughs> anyway, uh, our guest was on Highway to Health. How many people tune in to our radio show, Highway to Health? Well, thank you very much. Every Wednesday morning on WBNT and 103.5 FM now, we live stream it uh, through MotherEarthWorks.com so you can listen to the program live. Uh, we also record it so that you can tune in at any time and listen to it. Uh, we also are doing now with our uh, Highway to Health Facebook, we're actually live in the studio, so if you want to pop in, you can see Jameson, who, he's not here tonight, he was saying he might show up, that's my co-host on the air with me, he's new, he's been with us now, what, three, four, four months, five months, six months, I don't know, something around six months, and so uh, we've been uh, really enjoying the show a lot, and it's moving in lots of new directions, trying to bring you good health information throughout the weeks. So I uh, appreciate anybody tuning in there. Upcoming events, I just want to give you a couple little things that are happening over at Mother Earth. Uh, Mother, Mother's Day makeover, May 11th. So ladies and gents, you can come over and get made over. <laughs> You're not full makeup for makeovers, but it's our, our good friend Marianne Thiesman, who's an esthetician, uh, is there to kind of give advice about the uh, facial products, things of that nature. Coming up for our next event, which will be our next Healthy Living series, will be an herb walk at Cedar Lane Farm. That's our farm that, uh, where we live. And we were out there today with our, my guests. And so we walked in the woods a little bit, got recharged, looked at some of the native Appalachian herbs that are poking their heads up out of the, out of the ground, our cohoshes and blood roots and ginsengs and golden seal. And, Lots of fun trilliums and just a whole lot of fun things that we were. And our herb of the month is cleavers, and we ran into a lot of cleavers today. Right? Yeah. Cleavers is a great herb. Uh, you can tune in again to Highway to Health and talk with our good friend Eric Gillen, who is also a resident uh, herbalist from Athens, uh, Athens, Ohio. She gets on the air with me once a month, and we talk about herb of the month because we're just trying to educate people about plants. You know, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight a lot of about plants. Okay. Uh, coming up, and of course, the herb walk is rain or shine. So if it's raining, bring any proper tire. Because you will get wet in the last two, three years, it's raining. And you know what? We have a good time anyway. <laughs> you know, it's not cold in the day, so you know, a little water is not going to hurt. Coming up in June, we've got hemp and CBD oil, everything that you need to know about hemp and CBD. It's a big topic. It's in the news a lot, a lot of confusion about it. Uh, we have a guest who's going to be with me, Dr. Pratesh, Pratesh, yeah, Pratesh Kumar. He's actually from Bartonsburg, and he's a science guy, and he's been in the realm of uh, hemp and CBD research. He's going to be sharing the podium with me, and we're going to talk about how we can clear up a lot of confusion about what's going on in the uh, wild, wild west of CBD, because it's a wild, wild west out here. And it's because of a lot of times, you know, it's so new back into the marketplace after 73 years of prohibition. There's a big difference between industrial marijuana. So when we talk about industrial hemp and CBD, it's only one cannabinoid of over 100 that are found in the plant. And it has some very fascinating medicinal properties when we're talking about what is called the endocannabinoid system. We'll get into the discussion about that. We call it ECS for short. So anyway, that's just a few of the things that are coming up. I uh, wanted to mention, when you come to the store, uh, make sure you pick up one of these little magazines. We provide these for free to buy monthly. Every other month, we get, uh, so you get, it's great, tons of information, recipes, good ideas. It's free. 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 <laughs> Don't get a lot of free stuff these days, right? So we really like to provide and help you with more better, uh, other types of education, so it's really important to do that. All right, let's get down to our topic tonight. Very important topic, protecting your memories, looking at cognition, what can we do about that? Uh, all of us are aging, some better than others, in different 
ways, different aspects. Um, we all probably know somebody in our personal lives, you know, whether it's a family friend, a parent, you know, someone, maybe a brother or sister who's maybe dealing with cognition and memory, whether we call it Alzheimer's, dementia, there's a lot of terminologies that go along. So tonight we're going to really be discussing about some of the underlying scenarios as first off causation, what could be underlying why these things are happening, why are we seeing such a precedence. Yes, we have more people in the world, and so percentage-wise we're going to have more of that, but what other factors could we do on a day-to-day -day basis that might be helpful? Uh, we're going to talk about some plants, plants that have been researched. Some of these plants are thousands of years of use in some of the classical traditions such as Ayurveda. So these are things that actually have a clinical aspect now because they've been taken into more of a clinical understanding, looking at the chemistries, and trying to figure out, well, wow, this really does have an aspect. This can work. We don't know until we get it in our body. We always have to remember that uh, a medicine is only as good as its starting material. So that means that the quality of the product is based on its raw material, and, it, and that raw material can have a lot of variables. So those are the things that we need science we need good companies who can provide us with quality products that have got something behind them. It's not just a name on a bottle, because that happens an awful lot. So, without further ado, I'm going to bring our guest up. Sarah Burton is uh, here. Where do you live, Sarah? Chicago. Chicago, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I'm in Chicago. So she's coming from Illinois. She traveled a far distance. <laughs> she's been here for a day already, and uh, we did staff training last night with our staff at the store, which was absolutely fun and great. We played Jeopardy. <laughs> Herbal Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, so it was a lot of fun that she created. So um, it was quite, quite, I don't think we're playing Jeopardy tonight. Are we? <laughs> All right. Okay, well, come on up, Sarah. Let's go ahead and let me get you up here and let's see if you can run the Am I on? Yes. I'm on. Seasons in 2016, then this is where I want to stay. 
I recently was able to get trained along with my colleague here, Julissa. We were trained by Dr. Dale Bredesen at a special seminar for us life seasons employees. And Dr. Bredesen wrote The End of Alzheimer's. And if you are related to anyone or have anyone in your life who's dealing with this critical health issue, I recommend picking up this book. There are a few chapters where, where he tells you in advance, this, these are the very dense science chapters, uh, but he makes it pretty easy to explain overall, and he lays out a whole protocol that he's developed. So he's the first doctor who's had reversal of Alzheimer's, dementia, and cognitive decline. He's had it published in over 100 cases where people had to retire early, they were on medication, they had testing showing that they were declining and declining and declining, not able to come up with words any longer, not having the same kind of recall, and through his protocol, which involves diet and lifestyle changes, supplements, you know, um, good sleep patterns, things like that, but through his protocol, people have been able to return to work and have great improvement. So there's hope for the first time. These are some of his credentials. He is one of the pre premier neurologists working in the country today. So we were lucky enough to learn from him. So he has an entire book, right? An entire best-selling book about this problem. But just for tonight, I mean, when he was giving us the seminar, we were doing our best to keep up with him. He's, he's a brilliant doctor. So we're going to talk about just three aspects tonight of cognitive decline, sort of things that we can address pretty simply through uh, some diet and lifestyle changes and through supplements. So three major contributors to cognitive decline are a lack of circulation and blood flow to the brain. And you may have seen this in family members when they start developing hardening of the arteries. Sometimes you can see in great-grandma that she starts to slow down a little bit. A lot of that's the circulation and blood flow. We could also have a lack of the building factors that our brain needs. And there could be a buildup of too much free radical damage and inflammation. Inflammation is such a buzzword these days, right? So we're hearing about all kinds of beneficial nutrients we can use to help support the body's healthy response to inflammation. So that lack of blood flow is also called cerebral vascular deficiency, and that's something you can be diagnosed with from your doctor. And not all of the, <laughs> the uh, symptoms are up there. So uh, you could develop difficulty with concentration and memory, you could be struggling with absent-mindedness, confusion, low energy levels, a feeling of tiredness. You could also develop symptoms like vertigo or ringing the ears, the tinnitus. That is also a symptom of low vascular, and maybe some people can relate <laughs> or have some of those symptoms. So how does increasing blood circulation help us improve brain function? It's because blood is bringing two things that your brain needs most, your blood sugar, that blood glucose from the healthy food you eat, and oxygen. So even though our brain is only 2% of our overall body weight, it uses 50% of our blood sugar. Isn't that amazing? 50% of our total blood sugar going to the brain and 20% of our oxygen is going to the brain. So it needs, it has a, a huge fuel need. So your brain needs the oxygen to convert that blood sugar into usable fuel. So if you think of your kindling a fire or your engine in your car, both need oxygen in order to create that spark. Your brain needs the oxygen to turn that food in your blood sugar into fuel as well. So what are some things that we can do to increase that circulation through our brains? Well, one of the easiest things we can do is to start to move our body more because any movement starts the blood flow and increases blood flow up to the brain. So if you think about on a normal day, if you're standing or sitting most of the day, your brain is at the highest point in your body. It's above your heart, so your heart is having to drive that blood upstream into those tiny, tiny capillaries into your brain. So it's having to work very hard. So getting your body moving is one of the best things you can do. And that can just be taking a walk around the block, it can be going swimming, it can be going for a bike ride, it can be just parking your car farther away at the store so you get a little extra motion. Taking the stairs, we did that at the hotel. <laughs> we were on the fourth floor and so we took the stairs every time just to get get us moving a little bit. Um, and even just getting up and stretching your leg muscles and your thigh muscles can get your blood flowing more. 
Eating a healthy diet is another important thing that you can do in order to help with circulation. So there are foods that can contribute to a decline in circulation and foods that can contribute to healthier circulation. So packing more plants in. I think that a great idea, I've heard a couple nutritionists say, instead of focusing on what not to have, what you can't have, Focus on what you're trying to pack in. And so by the end of your meal, if you're thinking about all these wonderful abundant colors you're trying to fit in, getting a whole rainbow at every meal, so some red bell peppers, some carrots, right? Some yellow peppers, some spinach, some wonderful wild greens from the farm. Oh, side note, if you can go to the herb walk, you must go to the herb walk. The farm is incredible. My colleague and I feel like we were renewed, just being out there in nature, getting to see the plants and their habitat, getting to nibble on them, it was so cool. So you can pack more plant foods in, vegetables, leafy greens, berries, um, beans, sweet potatoes, all the bright, vibrant colors, the purple cabbage, blueberries. If you eat the rainbow, you're gonna get a lot of different kinds of nutrients from your food. Replacing canola oil and refined vegetable oil with olive oil, and there's beautiful olive oil from Tom's, <laughs> wonderful olive oil available from Tom's at Mother Earth. Um, avoiding processed foods, so things that come in packages. One of the health food stores I call on in central Illinois has a gal on staff who's uh, 32, and they have a Twinkie in a package that's older than she is. <laughs> they keep it on their counter, and it says, this Twinkie is older than Courtney, and it doesn't have any mold or anything growing on it because it's just made out of chemicals, and it will probably be here long after us. So, <laughs> they, you know, there's the adage, if your grandparents wouldn't recognize it as food, if your kindergartner can't pronounce the ingredients right, not something to put in your body. So, so reducing stress means that your blood vessels can open up, and you can have better circulation, better oxygenation all throughout the body. That also means you'll be more energized overall. Speaking of hydration, Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> 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 See who remembers those. Oh, drinking enough water. Like I just did. So they say, you know, we're 70% water. Our blood is mostly water. So keeping our body well hydrated is one of the best ways to promote healthy circulation because if our blood is getting thick and dehydrated, it's not going to flow so easily, right? And make sure you have a good, clean water source. So whether it's a water filter or water that you buy from Dave, and I like to use glass water bottles so that I'm not getting any plastic compounds leached into my water. And that way if I leave it in my car in the summer, I don't have to worry about the different estrogen byproducts from plastic that can leach into water bottles. So a nice glass or stainless water container. Stopping smoking. There are lots of reasons to stop smoking, but when we're talking about brain health, smoking, like stress, causes those blood vessels to constrict, and that decreases the amount of blood that can make it to our brain. Another thing we can do is practicing inversion. So have you guys seen those inversion tables that kind of look like a, uh, either a massage table or an ironing board, and you can kind of tip upside down? <laughs> Does anybody bet on one? Yeah, it's an interesting experience, right? So you can either be on an inversion table or you can do a yoga pose like downward facing dog where your head is tilted down. So like we were saying before, our head spends almost all of our waking hours up over our heart. You can sort of help it out by tipping it down and start slowly because I am a competitive person and at a health fair I did an inversion table and I was trying to go longer than anybody else. And that is not the right way to handle it. I had a 10 day headache after that because you're supposed to start with like five seconds and then 10 seconds. And I was like, I'm gonna win it 30 people. And that was not the way to do it. So, <laughs> so start slowly for me with yoga pose. We can also use medicinal herbs. So there are many famous herbs that people know of for cognitive health. Ginkgo biloba is probably the herb that most people would be able to come up with when they bought up an herb that's good for the brain, right? Ginkgo, we've heard of. Uh, Vimposatine, one we may not have heard of. And then ginger, which maybe you think of more for your holiday baking. But all of these help with circulation to the brain. So let's find out why. So ginkgo is one of the most heavily researched and proven herbs 
in the world. It's been studied in countries all over the world and shown to help specifically with brain health over and over and over again. Like Dave says, it dates back in many systems of medicine going back thousands of years. And it, it's what's always shown is that ginkgo is beneficial to help with memory. It's a longer term herb, so typically you see memory improvement at around the eight week mark, so two months worth of taking a supplement, so you'll really start to reap the great benefits of it. If you're somebody with very low blood pressure though, you may feel it very quickly, and we talk about that, I think, on the radio show. If you're someone who tends towards really cold hands and feet, if you get uh, a little woozy if you stand up too fast, that's like me, uh, ginkgo can start to make you feel back to normal very quickly, so it's a great verb to help with that. So almost every scientific study that has proven the benefit of ginkgo uses the same form of ginkgo extract that Life Seasons uses in the Clarity product that we're talking about tonight. So uh, it helps open up blood vessels, that keeps the blood flowing. It also kind of makes the blood less sticky, so it flows more easily. And ginkgo contains a compound, which is, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the only compound known to man that can help the red blood cells that are that round shape be able to kind of squeeze through in smaller, tiny capillaries of blood vessels, is what I've heard. So that science hasn't been able to do that, but Mother Nature can. So it's also been shown to be helpful with some of the other issues that go along with cognitive decline and brain health and that insufficient circulation, such as the ringing of the ears, vertigo, and depression. So this is something we talked about on the radio show, that sometimes when someone starts to have a little cognitive decline and they're aware of it, they're uncomfortable, they want to sit out from society. They don't want to go and expose and be embarrassed, right? That they don't always know somebody's name anymore, that maybe they're forgetting faces or words, so they retreat from life, and then there's this vicious spiral that happens, a cycle where we're retreating from life, we become more depressed, we don't interact as much with others, and we lose our sharpness more and more. So it's a very sad situation, and people can help potentially with those aspects as well. All right, another topic. Talk amongst yourself. <laughs> don't eat the foods that are highest in phosphatidylserine. Okay, so raise your hand if you regularly chow down on Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I hope nobody really eats this. This is not a thing we should be eating. That is, a, that is the richest dietary source of, of phosphatidylserine. So, but now in the day of uh, mad cow, we're in the post mad cow era, no one is eating calories anymore. Okay, so the next most rich food, chicken hearts. Also not a common uh, American snack food, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, herrings, mackerel, and eel are other foods rich in phosphatidylserine. So it's really important to take it as a supplement, as you can see, because I'm not eating most of those foods on a regular basis. So there's this really fascinating herb called toothed club moss. And it gives us a compound called Huperzine A. And there's also Huperzine B, but Huperzine A is what we're talking about here. So going back into ancient times in China, there was a special formula created for elders, and it contained this herb, toothed club moss. And so now when research is done, they say, ah, there's a specific compound in toothed club moss called Huperzine A, and it prevents the breakdown of an important chemical messenger in the brain called acetylcholine. So when the brains of people with dementia Alzheimer's I looked at, they have very low levels of acetylcholine. So we know that acetylcholine is really critical for keeping our brains functioning as they should. And if you know anyone who is currently undergoing treatment for dementia or Alzheimer's, they may be on one of these drugs. Aricept is probably the most common drug when you have Alzheimer's or dementia. Uh, Cognex and Exelon are, two, are the other two in this category. They all work by helping your body not break down acetylcholine so fast so it can stay around and do its job longer. Here we have an herb that can do the same thing. So pretty cool. This is another herb that's classified as, as a drug in, I think, Japan and Russia. But we have access to it here in the US. 5-AD3, now this is a, an ingredient that isn't in the Clarity product but is easily available. We've got plenty of choices from the shelf at Mother Earth. And uh, reduced vitamin D3 activity in the brain is associated 
with a decline in brain health. So vitamin D3 is responsible for turning on over 900 genes, and some of those are essential for keeping the brain healthy and storing memories. Uh, Dr. Bredesen, who wrote the book, The End of Alzheimer's, recommends that we have blood levels of 50 to 80 nanograms per milliliter, which is higher than the typical doctor recommends. So he advocates taking much more, and there's a formula so you can kind of work out for yourself based on what your D3 score is to find out how much you should be supplementing to get your blood level to where you want it to be. So you can find out more at Dave's store. <laughs> So here's the other thing. So now we're more aware of sun damage, right? Who wears SPF to pre prevent sun damage, right? I do every day, every day I want to protect my skin. Did you know that if you wear SPF 15 or higher, you're blocking up to 99% of your body's ability to manufacture D3? I know. So we're trying to protect our skin from wrinkles, but we're setting up a vitamin D3 deficiency. All more reason to take it in supplement form. Bone to my microphone. MCT oil, another ingredient that's not found in this formula because this one doesn't have oil, it's all dry ingredients in a capsule form. But MCT oil is widely available at the store. You can add it to your coffee, you can put it in a fat bomb, but MCT oil will immediately make you feel clearer in your thinking, especially if you have it maybe mixed in with food or something like coffee, it's great. Uh, the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation says that our bodies rapidly convert those medium-chain triglycerides and coconut oil into ketones, which our, body, our brain can use as an energy source. And I know from watching a family member, they started putting coconut oil on her toast instead of butter, and she got a few words back within just a couple weeks. I mean, it's pretty remarkable how fast it can happen. So an ingredient called bacopa. So I tried to keep everything short, but man, I couldn't cut down on bacopa. <laughs> Is this a better herb you love, too? Such an amazing herb. So it's a flowering herb from India. It's been studied many times in the US and it's been found to be incredibly helpful at assisting with memory. In one study on people who were age 65 and over, it's also been studied on people who were 18 to 40, on people who were age 40 to 55. It's been studied many times. But in this study on people who were 65 and over, the group who was taking 300 milligrams of bacopa extract had enhanced word recall, a decrease in depression symptoms, which we just said goes along with that kind of cognitive decline. They had a decrease in anxiety symptoms, and they had a soothing of their heart rate. And the group who got the placebo pill, the sugar pill, they didn't have any of those benefits. So the bacopa was shown to be extremely helpful with all of those symptoms. It's thought that one of the ways that bacopa helps us is because it's also helping with that acetylcholine, like we saw before. People who have Alzheimer's are found to have not enough acetylcholine, so anything that increases our supply is very helpful. In current medical tests, it's been shown to really help us retain memories and keep our mental sharpness. Uh, with bacopa, the best results come after you take the herb three months or longer. So we have seen some of these ingredients can give us really quick benefit, and some of them get better and better the longer we take it, the more we can consistently we take a, a product. So we've covered lack of circulation and blood flow. Oh, my, my arrows aren't working, my check, oh there it is. And then check the building factors for the brain. So now we're gonna look at inflammation. You like the graphic I picked for inflammation, right? <laughs> It's dramatic. <laughs> so the free radical damage and inflammation that can happen. So what's interesting to note is that the brain creates a lot of free radical damage just doing its regular job, just from its normal processes. Sometimes we think about free radicals as things that happen to our body when we're breathing pollution or smoking cigarettes or eating, you know, fried foods. They also just happen as a function of our bodies doing what our bodies are supposed to do. So uh, those free radicals, those are molecules that cause damage to our cells and DNA. And a lot of times people use the analogy of rust on metal, or if you cut an apple and it starts to oxidize and get brown when it's uh, you know, sliced on your plane on your counter, that that's free radical damage having oxidation. And so that's one of the reasons that we're encouraged to eat a diet that's 
full of these colorful veggies because they are they're full of antioxidants, and antioxidants stop those free radicals from doing more damage in our body. They help stabilize those free radicals. So some foods that are rich in antioxidants also are some of the foods that help with promoting healthy circulation. Berries, tomatoes, broccoli, spinach, nuts, and green tea. I think that we had everything on this list today. Way to go. <laughs> Yeah, because we ate lunch with you. <laughs> so another thing we can do to help prevent free radical damage and inflammation, an unhealthy amount of inflammation, also stop smoking, start using a water filter, and using an air purifier. So we can see how many of these categories have overlapping behaviors, right? You're getting the message, right? You can also increase your fish oil intake. So that would be another product you would want to do in addition to the Clarity. There are lots of great choices. I saw a cool new brand today at Mother Earth that I haven't seen before. So many interesting products you have at your store. But fish oil has been shown in many, many scientific studies to help our body have a healthy inflammatory response. Other benefits are it can make your hair shinier and make your skin look good. A friend of mine who works in the health food store world says, have you ever seen on a nature show when a grizzly bear first wakes up from hibernation and how matted and scraggly they look and then they go and eat a bunch of salmon and they get glossy and beautiful <laughs> and it's the fish oil. And I was like, that's the best testimonial for fish oil I've ever heard. I want to be glossy and beautiful like a grizzly that's been chowing down on salmon oil. And I think you had some salmon oil on sale today too. Nice. Get glossy and beautiful like a grizzly bear. <laughs> Another herb that helps uh, quench those free radicals and help fight too much inflammation is ginger again. So everyone's heard of turmeric. Turmeric is all the rage. It contains curcumin, which we know is a really potent anti-inflammatory antioxidant. The cousin of turmeric, ginger, also contains curcumin. We can also take ginkgo. So ginkgo is so well known for circulation benefit, opening up those blood vessels, making the blood less sticky. Lo and behold, it also is a great free radical scavenger and helps protect the brain from oxidative stress. My favorite little plant, Bacopa, also has antioxidant benefits that are specifically linked to the brain. It helps increase SOD and glutathione levels in the brain. We can also take vincocetine. So we heard that that helps with the blood flow as well and helps the blood use our blood sugar, brain use our blood sugar more effectively. And it also is an antioxidant for our entire nervous system, which the brain is the most important part. So, let's see if my check marks right now. <laughs> we talked about lack of circulation and blood flow. No. Nope. And then lack of building factors. Oh, there it is. It's slow. It was slow. Oh, see? And there is the graphic for it. Oh, see? They, all right. Well, that was going to be the piece de resistance, you guys. Was the, wait, those are going to pop up. <laughs> so we've talked about all of those. So we've seen that those are three very important principles for keeping our brains healthy. And we can see why looking for ingredients that support all of those would be important in our everyday brain health formula. Clarity, which is on sale at Mother Earth Foods right now, uh, contains all those ingredients that we talked about other than the D3, which I would recommend along with it, the fish oil that I would recommend along with it, and the MCT oil, which you will really benefit from. So those are great things to add on. So you can probably not see, because <laughs> it's pretty small. Okay. Oh, it's bigger, bigger, yeah. 425 milligrams of Bacopa, and it was 300 milligrams that was proven in multiple human clinical studies to help with word recall, uh, uh, decline in anxiety, uh, reduced amounts of depression, and we have a nice fat dose of Bacopa here. We have a full therapeutic dose of ginkgo biloba at 120 milligrams. We have a nice dose of 100 milligrams of phosphatidylserine. We have a really supportive amount of ginger to help with that heat and circulation. We have 20 milligrams of cuprazine A, so it takes 200 milligrams of truth club moss to give us 20 milligrams of that cuprazine A compound. And then we've got 20 milligrams of vincocetine. Again, that's considered a therapeutic dose of vincocetine. And all of that is in two capsules a day, so it's a very easy thing to take. Um, I think it's recommended that you do it in divided doses. That's specifically because
because if you're just starting out increasing your circulation to your brain, you could get a headache if you go from zero to 60 very quickly with increasing all that blood flow to your brain. Like I said, I, I don't make smart decisions, so I started taking two right away, and I did have like a day of headache, but not too bad, and then now I just take it at the same time for convenience sake. So, we can probably give more questions at the end. Do you have anything, Dave, that you want to contribute? What? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you had your microphone over there. I would have been calling on you all this time. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm just letting you go. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. No, you're doing great. You're doing great. Um, in regards to other plants that we talk about circulation, I just want to refer to you, cayenne pepper. Absolutely. Because Dr. Christopher, John Christopher, was one of the American herbalists of our of the last century, and uh, he uh, he studied in some of the old what is called Thompsonian herbalism, and cayenne pepper was one of the heart and soul of that protocol. Really, yes, in yes. almost every form of it was cayenne pepper. A cayenne pepper moves blood from the tip of your toe to the top of your head. So it's been used for blood pressure regulation for yes. people, whether you have low blood pressure or even elevated blood pressure, because it's working on the vascular wall to help to open up the, the main artery capillary systems so that the blood moves. So again, I've had people respond well with, with that. In time this, but you can't put everything in a capsule. <laughs> and you cover the issue of, of circulation. So in any herbal formula, you know, a lot of times you will have some either in what they call a stimulant category or you know, something to get it to move. Once you ingest it, it gets it into the system so that it can get to target areas for where you're really trying to work. So, very good plan. Uh, you can take it singularly in capsule. You can eat spicy your food. Uh, also, cayenne has the ability to enhance what's called substance P, which helps to regulate your pain threshold. Right. So, people who have a lot of pain, it has a real benefit there. I have seen it heal bleeding ulcers because it increases the, it stimulates the gastrointestinal tract to produce more mucus. So again, another benefit. Lots of things. So it's an herb, not just for a specific condition. It's an herb that has many actions within the body that helps to bring it back into better balance. Now, you don't just go start taking a ton of <laughs> Some people will do that. <laughs> and they usually don't stay with it because it's a little warming. Yeah. So we usually start with low dose. If you're going to do a capsule, you might take a capsule at the beginning of the meal so that you eat on top of it. Once your body gets used to the cayenne, it will not create the reaction that might be a little warming. It's not uncomfortable. It's just that sometimes people feel this heat. <laughs> and they go like, whoa. You know, right. they're not used to that. It's they a think it's heart, they kind of think it might be heartburn, mm -hmm. you know, to that degree. So we say it's a little bit lower. So, but anyway, the circle of that's really good. Absolutely. Um, I was thinking of another plant that's no, really a fun, 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 fungi. Fungi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're a fungi. We have a fungi. Yeah, we have a fungi. My, my co host, you know, we, had a, we did a thing with uh, mushrooms, so we talked about fungi. Okay. And, you know, so, <laughs> but uh, lion's mane mushroom uh, is all, has a ton of, ton of, ton of research. Again, probably coming more out of Japan and China mm -hmm. than the United States. At this point, Europe has actually done a lot of research. And, it has, um, works with what is called nerve growth factor, which is one of the things that was discovered by an Israeli uh, scientist who won the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize for in regards to uh, the ability to regenerate nerves, which was unheard of. In the past, they thought the brain cells, when you lose brain cells, they said, oh, you only got so many when they're gone, they're gone. You know, I think we'd all be dumb and stupid by now. <laughs> That was true. So they started realizing, though, that nerve and nerve endings and nerve growth has a really important factor. So when we start to talk about uh, inflammation, particularly in the brain, things that we can work with that are going to help to regenerate are critically important, I think. And so um, this is a little different formula. It doesn't have that component. It's not designed for that component, but it's still another thing that a person can utilize. Uh, you can use these more expensive purified extracts, which is what was used in the clinical work. It's expensive stuff, and you don't always see the result in a short period of time. It's one of those long-term things. Uh, I know I had read papers with the use of lion's mane extracts in stroke recovery, and uh, because, again, it helps with that nerve growth. We've had damage to nerve transmission due to uh, dead tissue. The nerve system will rebuild its way around the damaged area 
It's kind of like, you know, if you go down the, the, the road and there's a roadblock, you take a left-hand turn to another roadblock or another roadblock. And, you know, eventually you get to where you want to get to, and that's kind of what nerve growth factor is about, so it's kind of an interesting factor. So keep that in mind. I thought that might be another add in a here thing to, add up. to just kind of think that you can buy it in powder form. Yes. You don't have to take purified high-dose extracts to get to a clinical dose to be effective. And uh, we do carry powders, and so you can put that in the blender, make smoothies, soups, yes. stews. It's already processed in a way you have to cook mushrooms. You have to heat these up, and then use the use of steam processing that helps to break down that cell wall to render what's inside available to you. So if it's in, if it's ground up mushrooms in a pill, I'm going to tell you it won't even cross over through your intestinal. It's just fancy fiber. It's just fancy, expensive. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know. Uh, you can look at different mushroom blends and things of that nature, but specific to brain health, I know that that's a really good one. I want to give you a, a heads up on the Hooperzine too. The Hooperzine A has been actually uh, compared in clinicals to Verisep, yes. and they stacked it up, you know, against each other and found that the Hooperzine A worked as good or better in certain circumstances and situations than the actual pharmaceutical, which has a lot of side effects. Yeah. Hoop A does not have side effects, and it works by uh, the, what is it, yeah, the uh, Aricep works as what is called an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. That's right. There's an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase, which is what breaks down acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is what helps the frontal lobe of your brain, which of course is by ginkgo, brings blood flow to the frontal lobe, really importantly, so that recall can be quicker. Okay, so here again, group A, keeping more acetylcholine present in the brain so that it doesn't degrade because it degrades very quickly after it's utilized. And so this is a, it's a neurotransmitter. It's just one of those things that we need. So we talked about the phospholipids. You talked about phosphory. Well, phoscholine, inositol, B vitamin, these are things that actually feed nutrients again back into Brain. So, if you're dealing with something a little bit more serious and a person who is really having a lot of more challenges, these are things that can go into blender drinks and get it yes. into people. And then you look and target to see, well, hey, how are they really doing? And you don't always notice it because I'm dealing with a 97 year old mother who is in cognitive decline and dementia, but she's doing very well for the most part. She's very much living in the here and now. She might not know. But she said, told you to grasp the time five minutes ago, but it doesn't matter because the bottom line is, and we've seen things, you know, we wonder sometimes if we hadn't been doing the things, would her decline have been more pro prominent and, and quicker? So at 97, I feel like she's still with it. Yeah. She still knows who you are. Amazing. She might not remember your name, but she knows who you are. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. She doesn't, any of us, you know, in family, if you're, if you're around her a lot, she knows it. It's when you don't see her. And you come back into her circle that she goes, well, who are you? <laughs> but you know, if, you, if you hang around her for a while, she'll remember you. This is pretty cool stuff. So. Yes. But uh, I'm trying to think of some many other things. There's a lot, there's a lot in the brain health of the phospholipids. Uh, phoscholine. Phosphatidylcholine is triple strength lecithin. You can also now get lecithin from sunflower oil, not from soy. Uh, a lot of issues with GMO soy, lecithin. Lecithin's been around a bazillion years. And it's an, in fact, it's an emulsifying. Okay, you'll see it in chocolates because it's a way to take oil and water and help it to be able to be fluid, so to speak. So your uh, phosphatidylcholines are good. Egg yolks yeah. and eggs, you know, real blood, yes. grass-fed particularly, not uh, not the store-bought that you think about, not the whatever the one with the water behind it and then the lakes, you know. No. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, but these are all things that really make a difference, I think, in um, it's everybody's different. This is the other thing. I want to also mention hemp. I want to mention the cannabinoids, not just CBD. Uh, cannabinoids have a very interesting meaning. When we talk about Alzheimer's, we talk about the uh, the plaque on the uh, on the nerve ending. You know, this uh, type of specific plaque. The plaque formations are also tied to blood sugar management. Yes. You haven't mentioned earlier, yeah. and that blood sugar management is critically important, not only in dietary, but also in how your body's handling it. Benpocetine, like you said, coming back in here is a good one. And when my dad had his stroke, that was one of the first things I put him on was 20 milligrams of benpocetine because in the literature I read was the right brain, left brain communication 
is very uh, much so influenced by glucosamine, yeah. and not just for bringing better oxygen into the brain. But the research was that if you can get a person on glucosamine as quickly as you can from the stroke, that, from the aspect of stroke recovery, the, the better results in, in total recovery from that. So it's kind of interesting, and that's coming out of Europe. You're right, that was yeah. really good research. So. Very interesting. Well, I don't know if you all are like... You, you don't need this. <laughs> no, no. I don't know if you guys are like me, but when I go to get a new cell phone, I peek behind the counter and see what all the experts who work at that store are using as their personal cell phone. And so here you have the expert who's saying, this is what I... I know you got it out there. Yeah. What are your thoughts on fasting with brain health? Gosh. Well, so Dr. Bryson... Fasting with brain health. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, Dr. Bredesen does recommend uh, sort of a modified intermittent fasting. Um, the diet that he uh, recommends in the book he calls Ketoflex 12-3, so that 12 hours between the end of your dinner and the start of your breakfast. So not outrageous, not too intense, um, but he talks in the book about how the, the gene for Alzheimer's is related to our genes for surviving famine. So blood sugar is absolutely right, isn't that fascinating? So that somebody who has the genetic predisposition to develop Alzheimer's was someone who, you know, in the early, earliest days of human existence was better able to tolerate famine. And so that kind of putting our body into that slight fasting uh, not total fasting, but just a, a decent amount of time between the end of dinner and the beginning of breakfast kind of helps get our blood sugar more regulated. So, yeah. I was going to mention, uh, my thought about the cannabinoids was that it helps to pull that black box that is yeah. nerve endings. Yeah, it really helps to remove them over a period of time. Everybody's different, whatever dose we don't know. But I know that it's been showing up more and more in the literature in regards to that. Back to fasting. Fasting is a great thing. And you know, fasting is a good way to reset your gut. It's also a good way to reset your immune system. Most of you don't realize that, you know, 78% uh, of your immune system is residing in your gut, your intestinal system. And so, because we eat, 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 and we all the time, and snack in between, you know, we don't ever give our systems a real rest. And so by fasting, it really is kind of a reset. And so it's kind of been interesting, you know, not just in cognitive health and thinking in all kinds of things are starting to find it out. One little tidbit is that before chemotherapy, if you do a day of fasting before chemo, it is much more powerful and more targeted than if you don't fast. And getting better outcomes with people who are fasting one day before their chemo. And then after they have their treatment, they'll go back to eating whatever, you know, in their dietary program. But that's a very interesting factor, and it ties back to blood sugar yes. and targeting specifically how certain chemotherapeutic agents are going to get into the cells because of the transport systems dealing with glucose. Fascinating. Pretty fascinating. Good question. Yeah. Others? Yeah. Um, can you say that those two things are more intense the field of this was D3 and is MCT? And the tissue oil. Yep, those are the three, yeah, the three supplements that were in my presentation, but I agree on the lion's name, that if, if you're dealing with a situation where somebody is in cognitive decline, if they have uh, subjective memory impairment or uh, measurable memory impairment, that it would be a wonderful thing to add, and especially, too, if trauma, you know, a head trauma has contributed to that, um, that's one of the categories that Dr. Bredesen has talked about as a contributor to uh, to the cognitive decline. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm going to knock on the head. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's huge. So, yes, on the head. I have a question. Okay. Is, uh, is it possible to get rid of amnesia? Possible to get rid of amnesia? That is a really tough question. That's a hard question. It is. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I really don't know. Yeah, I would say that everything we've talked about would be definitely beneficial with providing the right situation. I don't think that there's anything we've talked about that would work against recovery from that, but something like Lion's Mane too, I would think, especially if there was a traumatic brain injury, would yeah, be really beneficial. what the source of why the amnesia would come about, you know, just those different causative factors. Helping to identify that might be a little bit of a back to, is there an inflammatory compound? Is there a circulatory 
issue. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you can look at it back from the nutrient bed, like you said, the fossil lipids, mm -hmm. because that is, a, you know, then the fish oils again, you know, because of uh, fish oil is usually uh, the EPA, DHA levels, and there's actually a new compound they found called EPA in fish oil. And it, it's a brand new, uh, it's, it's cutting edge, it just came out just in the last few months, and I've been reading about this compound called EPA. And there's only, actually, I've only found one company that even carries a fish oil that carries, has the DPA in it. Yeah. But, uh, and I'm not real up on it, so I'll tell you next time we get together. Because <laughs> I'm so excited. Like 37 things for you just today. Yeah. But <laughs> the thing is, uh, that might be possible. And it just, it's hard to say. I, I know other, other plant compounds that have potentials. Again, it depends on the type of. And you're going to laugh at me, but psilocybin. I don't know if you've ever read much about psilocybin. I'm reading a book called Changing, I think it's called Change Your Mind. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's a fascinating read about the medicinal aspects of certain psychotropic plant, you know, fungi and plants in regards to resetting certain aspects of us, of who we are. It's not about going out and taking something to, you know, have this trip or anything. And to escape. Yeah, to escape from things. It's actually a reset back. And I, I sat in on a conference with a man by the name of Kev, uh, Kenneth Crowfrock. He's a naturopath out of uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, Eric Lindell, Arizona. I think he's got a clinic there. Anyway, he did a, a talk on terminal illness, but he also did a talk on neurological health. And in both of the lectures, he discussed the fact of low dose guided use of psilocybin and what has been happening in the individuals that have been using it in a guided, you know, more uh, watchful setting. And that he said that, first off, terminal ill patients, came, you know, stage four cancer patients know and terminal illness. He said that they no longer fear death. They're through every, whatever their experience has been, while they're going through this somewhat guided process, was that uh, they no longer feared when they got done and then they felt that they had actually connected back to a part of themselves that they had felt disconnected from. So I don't know that when you said they need them, really the first thing that triggered my head, but I wasn't quite, I haven't seen it in a clinical aspect that actually said yes in amnesia of patients, but just a good thought. I mean, but that's just give you a little bit of research to think about and maybe delve a little further. Does that help? This is a silly question. Nah, no question is silly. How many supplements is it safe to take at one time? One how many supplements is it safe to take at one time? A day's time. A day's, yeah, day's time. time. Well, I know people who've taken between 60 and 80 to 100, and it depends on the situation that they're in, but I can tell you that uh, it's pretty safe if you know what the quality of the raw material, the plants or the supplements you're going to be doing. It's hard to get that many down, so that's why you look at liquids and powders, okay, as much as possible in those scenarios. Now, the real thing is, it's not a cookie cutter thing that says, oh, I'm going to take this for that and X for that, and, you know, because at that point, remember when Dr. Ross first came out? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dr. Ross hit the, hit the airwaves, and next thing you know, every day he was on, whatever he talked about, People would run to the store to buy that one thing that he talked about. Okay. Isn't that more of an allopathic mindset yes. that says, oh, I take this pill for X, Y, Z. We don't think of it that way. And that's not how I look at things at all with supplementation. We look at functionality. We look at, if you have a diagnosis, it's fine to have a diagnosis. It's just as another window of opportunity to show us where can we start to work to get restoration, or what I like the word healing, not cure, healing. Because healing is something that is in every single cell of our body, the opportunity to do so. So supplementation is safe to take different ones, but they have to have a need for it, and there has to be a methodical understanding of why would I want to do that, and what would it be influencing in what system of the body. Most herbs are multitaskers. They have so many functions that they can perform, so if we take only one thing out, it doesn't perform as well, because it's not really more in harmony. So when we look at food, a carrot, a, you know, a tomato, or uh, whatever, a piece of a stick of butter, you know, 
everything that's in there is designed to kind of be that way because that's what nature provided. So I prefer to use more whole complex, whole plant, whole extracts as opposed to isolated constituents. So I, most of the things I look for are formulations. I look for a formula that can cover, like you talked about, this formula has a lot of areas. So instead of having to take a lot, we figured it up when we figured it out the other night. We added it. We added it up, and if you bought every single ingredient in this clarity formula, it would cost about $110 yeah. or $120 if you bought each one of them at retail price. Just, just to match the milligrams. Just to match the milligrams. We just did it as a fun exercise at our training, you know. And I said, oh, that's a good marketing piece. Who was going to spend $120, you know, on all of those? And then, you know, they'll last for so long. And then you don't even know if, you're even, if they're even blended together. Well, so formulation in, in supplements is, a, is an art. And do you remember what you have it on sale for at your store? Oh, I have it on sale? Yeah. <laughs> it's on sale. It's it is on sale. sale. It's something, it's under $40. Yeah, it's actually on the sale for $32.95. It's got a $3 coupon, so it's like $29.95. What else? Huh? You save $16. You save $16. You save $16. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of a good idea. And we want you to try it. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, we want results. Uh, it's easy in a formula because you can do two of those. Sometimes still take your D3, you got your fish oil. Right. You know, you've got maybe your multi, you've got a probiotic. Those are all in categories that are a little bit different. They're all addressing the same things in similar ways, but you know, probiotics good for the gut. Yes. Uh, your fish oil is the inflammatory. It's helping to keep your blood viscosity nice and smooth. Your cholesterol is going to be better, and you're going to get uh, EPA, DHA for brain cognitive health. Uh, DHA from algae. What do fish eat? They eat algae. They found that the fish that have the highest in DHA, DHA are they eat algae. Yeah. So you can get DHA from algae, you don't have to eat fish. Uh, so these are all factors, but good question, it's a great question. It is. Uh, we, uh, people come to me all the time with bag full of stuff that they've bought. Bag fulls. They've spent hundreds of dollars on these bag full of stuff. They have good intention. They think, oh, I need this because I read an article or I saw this, and I say, okay, fine. Let's take a look at that. And then I say, okay, this is a good quality product, okay, if it came from certain places, and I look at the ingredients, I go, ugh, this is all synthetic, there's nothing much good in here, let's put that over here. If they have something good that looks like it's promising, I'll stick it over here. And we divide it all up, but then I sit there and I say, well, let's look at what your circumstance is and see if any of these can fit and you pay the money. If we're going to use them, let's use them up, if not, but let's maybe approach it from a different angle. And so that's usually the way we like to work, okay, because it's not about... Everybody's different. We're all biochemical individuals. And what's good for you is going to be good for you and vice versa. And we have to really understand that. There's an energetic quality when you talk about instigating health and healing in an individual. It's to help you get in jack. Remember, Hippocrates said that it is not just the intuition of the healer, physician, teacher. It's the intuition of the person that you're working with that has to work together to make it all work. You know, doctors used to be it's not just the art of medicine. They can't practice the art of medicine in today's world because it's no longer it's based in what they say. Everything is science proven. But science doesn't prove everything. But we know science can help us uncover activities and understandings. But it doesn't mean just because science, science is learning things every day <laughs> that they didn't think. You know, every five years, what's in the medical literature is somewhat obsolete because there's new things that have come about that they have a deeper understanding of. So, I always think that you know, plants are phenomenal. They have such a wonderful ability to communicate with our DNA. I think they were put here because that's why they were here. Yes. <laughs> I think there's a, a relationship. <clears throat> when I was in, uh, I was on Vancouver Island last year at a group conference with uh, my good buddy David Winston and Chen Chao Cabrera. We did a, a deep, they did an intensive training. We did forest bathing in this beautiful forest on Vancouver Island. Basically, forest bathing is just basically was just a real slow walk for about an hour and a half to two hours. It had a destination, but when you got there, you got there. When you left, you left. But it just quietened everything down. All we were was present with the woods, the trees, the birds, the herbs, and wherever your focus kind of went to is where you went. The thing I noticed that within five minutes of doing that little exercise was all the stuff that's in your head that you keep thinking about and wondering about and worrying about 
It was gone. And all you are is present in a moment. And that's what is, I think, uh, part of that attunement that we sometimes get so caught up in our everyday world that we forget about connecting. We had a wonderful little hike. It was just a short little walk. We looked at herbs, we looked at plants, and you know, I get excited just to stay in an area of woods, you know. And it, I felt it, I felt like it restored my soul to do that. What's the date of your herb walk again that you have coming up? What's the date? May. Yeah, May 18th. May 18th. I, I can't Two sessions. It, enough. it just it felt like yeah. So We're gonna walk maybe. around the farm because the farm is also a work in progress. It's 19 years old that I've had it, and we have literally been restoring back into a native habitat. Uh, plants and indigenous species that were growing food and we're trying to introduce. Uh, we can walk around it. I could go in an area of like 10 feet, we could probably talk about 20 things. You know, just that are present right at our feet that we ignore every day and we forget about. So, isn't that what it's kind of about? Getting back in tune, isn't that what else is about? Is being able to be robust, feeling alive. And I think that sometimes we get so far removed from our core that we just kind of forget we need to get that remembrance back. And so plants have a way to do that. They actually can help us pull that back together. So I also, when I was at that conference, we sat with one herb. We had to draw it. Okay, we had to draw it. I'm not, I'm not hard. <laughs> so I'm sitting there looking at this plant and I'm trying to draw it. You know, and so every one of us, there's 20 of us, we all drew this plant and we sat with it. And then we sat in a big circle and we went around and around and around talked about what we observed about that particular plant. Not even saying the name of it, not talking about the medicinal aspect of it, but just to understand the plant we talked about, the habitat we looked at, the, whatever it happened to be. It was a fascinating exercise that I think, again, pulls us out of our mundane everyday, what we get caught up in, and focuses us on something a little bit different. And it really is a marvel because it lets you realize the marvel what our creation is about. And yeah. that to me is totally. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. When you're saying that, I'm thinking my phone is sending me an alert. Someone liked your picture on Facebook. It's sending me an alert. Like that plane ticket just dropped in price. And then, but I'm not getting an alert, maybe like that, a noise from nature, from creation. And I can go there and get quiet and just be like, fill it with what really matters. Just always remember, food is your medicine. You gotta eat real food, folks. You can't eat this plastic processed stuff that we get sucked into watching on TV at night if you're watching TV. You hear it on the radio, you hear all this stuff. That is so far removed from our DNA in terms of how our bodies work the process. Do the best you can, but keep improving every day on something that you already know, you already know in your brain. Because when you go to reach for say, oh, I probably shouldn't do <laughs> and if your brain's already telling you I probably shouldn't do that, well, that's just your first indicator that says, well, maybe what can I do to change that? You said something very important earlier in the lecture about the talking about food was that instead of thinking about the things you're giving up, think about the things that you can add in. And as your taste buds change, which they will, yes. I guarantee you, you take soda pop out of your diet on a daily basis, and you go to take a slug of it one time, you're going to want to spit it out. Absolutely. Because you know, like, there's so nothing here. Yeah. It's nothing in there nutritionally. So, and those are the things that are contributing to cognitive decline. Right. We didn't really get into the sugar thing real big because, I mean, but that is a huge, huge, huge thing about how your body's managing sugars. And I'm not just saying you can use by eating sugar, but, you know, you can eat something sweet. Sweet taste on the tongue in Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine is means nourish to nourish, it's comfort, okay? Sweet can come from numerous ways. You can make brown rice and you can start to chew it in your mouth, and the more you chew it, the sweeter it gets. It's the starch in your mouth, that amylase in your mouth, takes that starch and automatically starts to do better to the it. But it's a sugar that is nourishing sugar, it's called a full sweet, not a false sweet. Full sweet means it's giving you something. You know, honey, I can look at more and more, not full sweet because it's, you know, it's very quick to get in your system, but it's different than a false sweet. See when we get that? So when you eat a piece of fruit, like a bear or a banana, your tongue picks that up and it works differently than if you're eating a candy bar, a Snickers, and they can watch that. No, but you know. So those are just little tidbits and pointers. We talk about diet and food. Supplementation is to help us. It's the helpers to help us to compensate for what we are not able to do or get through our activity of our lifestyle. 
if you have a good, clean, healthy lifestyle, now you change something, you need less of uh, these types of interventions. But, so people always say, well, is there any side effects? Well, no, it's just the effect. The effects. Effects. Yeah. So side effects are created by the legal ease of the industry. That's just so you just remember that. When you see the commercial on TV, it gives you two minutes of they side effects. They call it They call it death. They say that really fast. And in some cases, they go to You get the point. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Oh, that's a great question. So the compound that's being used as a drug is synthesized in the laboratory from a component from the, uh, I have to go back and see. Oh, it's not clicking very quickly for me. If it's the, we don't want to hear Gary again, it's really sweet, but the seed. I was thinking it's the seed, but it's, it's kind of formed in the laboratory from a compound they from the seed. They, they don't harvest it. Anymore. They discovered it in the plant, but they didn't. Uh, they discovered it in the plant, but they weren't able to produce enough from it. It was such a small seed that they found a way to synthesize it. I would not eat the seeds from a periwinkle growing in your garden no. because I think there are also psychoactive effects that can happen from periwinkle. Yeah, and there's also the other components. You know, uh, Madagascar periwinkle has also been used. Some of the extracts, I think, from the root are used as uh, cytotoxic. So it actually kills cancer cells. So that could be yeah. Which is actually, but you got to know which product is that's coming out of Europe, and so we don't use it <laughs> because we don't have it available. It's not something you take over the counter. It has to be used with a practitioner, and they don't approve it in this country for that. So, but you can go to Europe and have it done, but you can't have it done. You know, Germany, they use it in Germany a lot. Is it is it good? It's a plant. Probably about this good. Oh, okay. It's a homeopathic product actually. It's pretty neat. It's got some interesting long term clinical work. We'll go there. Anyway, any other questions? That's your question. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. We're so grateful um, for this opportunity. We do have some product here if you're not interested tonight, at least in trying it. It does have a $3 coupon on top of the sale price, and we've got money back here. So if you feel like trying it, you can talk to these guys over here. Did Tracy make it? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to be here too, so we'll feel free to come up and talk a second. And if you have any ideas of topics that you would like to see us, you know, do, uh, we'll go out. I'll like do them. We'll get somebody to do them. We'll definitely try not to help them until we do. Are we going to talk? Yeah. Julissa's recipe is over there. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. This feels like a lucky ticket. All right. Okay. So the ticket number who wins the raffle basket? Yep. Yeah. With a mother in a t shirt and a shaker cup and a book and some products, yeah. is 305669. Oh. All right, look at that! Yeah. Fantastic! Yeah. That's right. You're right, that's right. There you go, man. Congratulations! Did you share anything in there? That menopause. Yeah. <laughs>